Hi, Anurag. Uh, thanks for joining me uh, today to talk about SAP uh, Sapphire Now wrap up, if you will. It uh, uh, has been a couple of weeks now since it um, ended, but um, the discussion continues. Thank you for joining me. With that said, um, what's your overall take on the whole event, um, their messaging and their narrative? Um, did you see any big change from the last year or uh, it was the continuation of the previous narrative? Yeah, Sarjit, first of all, uh, thank you for having me here. I think uh, it's a privilege to be here with you. So your question about what changed from l last year, the most important thing I see is when I said in my social media and uh, Twitter essentially was that SAP is back. Yeah. And a lot of the credit really goes to Julia White, who has joined them as CMO and chief solution officer as well. I think they're, she's trying to bid some order into what has been at SAP. So there are several things that actually stood out for me. One was their doubling down of their effort on intelligent enterprise and then rise with SAP, uh, two areas. Then the third, which has not been given a lot of press and media coverage is this upscale commerce, which was shoved about, which was launched about three years ago, but it kind of did not go anywhere whatsoever. Then the other important area was this concept of business network. I think they call it the networks of network. So I think those were the areas which I think are kind of very useful, uh, but they also talked about this uh, modular, this ERP modular, and this was a, there was a lot more conversation around cloud in a way saying that to almost ple pleading to the enterprise customers that, hey, there's a need to move to the cloud, you know, don't bet yourself completely on on-prem. Yeah. Yeah, I think he covered the the sort of high level. Let's drill down into each of these sort of topics, and in, in the first one being the intelligent en enterprise, right? Uh, under that, they they talked about sort of bunch of sub topics, if you will. They want to they want to create a one data model, uh, technically on the technical side, one data model on the business side. They under that sort of umbrella, if you will. They want to create this, uh, uh, what we used to call during dot com, the global trading web uh, network of networks. So, um, I, I I believe that on the technology side, it's the things are a little more possible. Uh, having Hana and trying to create like one data model. I think I, I, even on that technology side, let me take it back a little bit. It, it will take a take a little more work to make it seamless because they have a bunch of sort of lines of business. They have Ariba on, on the procurement side. You know, they have the core SAP, which is HCM, uh, BNL, um, and uh, supply chain management, right? All, all that stuff there. And they also have success factors and conquer. When it, creating this one sort of view for customers, employees, partners, uh, is a it's a big undertaking, I believe. Uh, the integration of these uh, these acquisitions, uh, I think, it takes a while. So one side is the technology side, other is the business side. Uh, what 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 do you think about intelligent enterprise and their their narrative? I, actually, by the way, um, I'm totally I totally agree with you. Julia actually did a fantastic job of weaving in all the products product areas. I will say at higher level into her talk mentioning examples and and where they want to take it i think um, her uh, communication style was uh, um also impressive you know like uh, it makes it made sense when when you were listening it made sense right right and that interview with the uh, as of blood yeah. was, was also uh, was also also very good yeah. yeah so i think this intelligent enterprise concept i think they launched it a couple of years ago but at the same time uh 
it's another way of saying that, you know, you need to have a connected business, yeah. right? That means you need to have a, you know, end to end, all the business processes are automated. And then you get a 360 degree view of the operations of your organization. I think it's a great wish list. It's very difficult to achieve, specifically on the SAP platform, because for it to be a seamless success, all of that information should reside into one data warehouse, right? I don't think at this point in time, SAP has done that, which almost requires like building the solution from ground up, uh, which also means that any in integration that has to be done across all the applications uh, have to be done externally outside of the database. I could be wrong there, but I don't think I am. But I like the concept of this modular ERP where you could actually start from any which way, whichever business process automation you want to do to be able to go and achieve your goal towards becoming that intelligent enterprise, right? And then this uh, uh, Signavio uh, acquisition, right? Which automates that, that uh, business process, you know, transformation is going to be significant. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, Hassel's talk uh, with Julia was interesting. I, I see that as a work in progress. They, they talk about the business process intelligence, right? It's an, yeah. not a new concept, as Hassel said, but it, it's not intelligent so far. You know, like it, uh, it's a batch process, if you will. You, you just configure it and then you run it. And then if you want to change it, you know, there's a, it's a batch process. Like and you can't tweak these things in real time. Yeah. But, um, a pandemic actually forced us to do like change our processes like you know we had to revert to the manual sort of ways of doing things yep. and then then maybe systems will adapt later later on um i, I think that's that's also an, an um, audacious goal and hasa said like there are two ways to approach it one is to do retrofit put the models in into existing data in data existing data uh, sort of systems of record and uh, and systems of uh, uh, engagement, those two types of systems that like get do the retrofitting of the models and then paint these pictures of uh, uh, these these uh, processes and then tweak as, as you need. And second is uh, install the models and then from now on they will they will start painting the picture. You know, from now on, uh, looking forward. But, yeah. but it, in both cases, I think. Um, they, I think they have to do some pilot piloting in some industries. Not you can't, they can't. They, they are in so many verticals, actually, right? They have expertise in different verticals, and um, they they probably say they run I don't know eighty percent or something. Then they say that number of the world's businesses and stuff like that, which uh, which is uh, true in many many cases. I think uh, um, it will take a while for that to take yeah, hold. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I. I, I agree with you. I think one of the important things that SAP has to realize too, that if you, you know, there are two target segments, the enterprise and the mid-market, you know, specifically the way these mid-market and the enterprise customers are adopting these cloud-based applications towards that connected business or the, or the intelligent enterprise is they start either in, either in two ways. One is they say, okay, you know what? Let me automate my one business process end to end, mm -hmm. which could be either a sales and marketing process, right? Or let me start with different business processes, depending upon what the business unit wants, whether it be sales, marketing, customer, you know, support, or supply chain, inventory management. When they start to see success, in any one of those, then they say, now how do I extend my capabilities to go from say within just the CRM, how do I connect it to customer service? How do I connect it to supply chain? So that is, and there is an extensibility that starts to happen, right? So SAP has to figure out 
how does it insert itself in that extensibility process and then ultimately the what these uh, enterprise customers and the mid market customers do is then they move on to this uh, densification of these applications which means that now i have got these applications i have automated certain business processes i know i need to now extend it to my suppliers and my partners and my customers too and i need to interconnect them and that's where orchestration and automation different types of or orchestration and automation comes into the picture that's only when you achieve true and in, uh, intelligent enterprise and i think sap at this point in time is a little bit away from it because there are so many different uh, vendors plus also the the infrastructure vendors like the um, gcp and and aws and azure have kind of taken the lead in this area as well so it becomes a little bit of a challenge for sap yeah yeah you know the data fabric is the, the talk of yeah. the town these days right real time analytics and sap talks about that too so i think there's a that's a good point actually if we take the conversation to one level higher to the industry sort of level uh, i think the, the erp vendors which you know sap uh, erp slash application vendors which is sap is one of the top ones uh, other than oracle is the other one right so i think their um their key sort of um value add i will say like maybe for the lack of a better term is the their expertise in different industries right so they specialize they they understand the processes deep down because they have their own um sort of services teams uh, in in people they go and install these things and configure the processes and these these used to be the multi year implementations yep. of the, their erp systems and they learned all that stuff right and there there's nuance in in by state by country by industry so they they have that know how i think that's they kind of shine there i believe but where they kind of lack a little bit um is that i mean a little bit is an understatement i think in this case um is that um the horizontal play of technology yep. if you will technology stack right so um i think that's uh, that's where they need the 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 help from the hyperscalers and or other technology providers i th i believe they need to be very open about their um uh, their relationship with uh, cloud providers and they need to hug them a little tighter i believe i i've said that many times they're talking to john <laughs> farrier and dave sure. like the, i think um, sooner or later you came in to the cloud providers i mean they are they are they are a force and they have a lot of bells and whistles like they they are giving you a lot of uh, platforms to build data models and ai and ml so i, th I think um um that it's it's true no uh, you you are right but sad. but also you know i mean you, you you are right in the sense that they need to hug them a bit tighter and they need to have to to build those alliances because if you look across all of them and you throw in ibm in the mix as well you know the the top 5 industry clouds that sap talks about are all common yeah. across all of these hyperscalers and including ibm the yeah. only difference in sap is the fact that they are also focused on what they call is i think industrial machinery or industrial goods that yeah. that different industry cloud uh which uh, industry cloud which is very different than what uh microsoft is targeting or gcp or aws are, are targeting so i think there is a lot of uh, synergies that can be done and 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 i believe you know these hyperscalers are are migrating more sap workloads to cloud than the sap themselves yeah that is true oh. yeah and at, at the end of the day we need the systems of record and and these traditional players have been strong there right um and, and in my view systems of record has they they have, they have become like commodity everybody has it like what's the differentiation right and and what do you do on top of those first layer of systems right uh, system of record that's where the magic happens i believe that's where the new way of marketing the new way of uh, 
customer relationship management CRMs happen. That's the yeah. new way of system, like building new newer capability, new products. Actually, if you are an auto um, sort of manufacturer, like you know the connected car and you know lighter and all that stuff, like you need to build that right for self-driving yeah. cars. If you are um, in healthcare, you need need to have like these. Uh, um, so IoT devices and homes to monitor, you know, health of people and stuff like that. So I think um, it they 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 need to take they need to enable. Okay, I'm taking the conversation more towards developers now. They need to enable the building of newer kind of newer capabilities for their customers on top of what they have. Uh, I personally believe that SAP in their keynotes. Like they they did a, a developer uh, sort of a keynote in the middle of the year, like what six months back or seven months back. Um, they dig a little bit deeper into the cloud uh, into the cloud side or what to say cloud, and talked about a lot about developer platform and developers. Um, but in the keynotes on in the annual events, they have downplayed that. I I think that's a mistake personally. I think yeah. they they need to uh, have segments on the on on the creators of newer systems like you know what, what are they doing for developer community uh, partners to build on top of sap so i think that they have a, a similar concept as vmware and ibm where they talk about build sell service type of a concept so when you talk about build you know where they in their in their partner program so when they talk about build it's like hey you how do you build your specific solutions on the SAP platform, and then we will certify those yeah. those solutions, and then those solutions will be discoverable on the marketplace. Yeah. I think that's the focus that they are trying to move towards through their partner uh, go to market strategy. Yeah, yeah, I, I didn't see them highlight, highlighting that during the keynote. I think that's what I'm trying True. to say. You were right. Yeah, yeah, I think they. I think they need to do that a little bit more yeah um, yeah. yeah enabling the what we traditionally call isvs or i call it like now now we call them startups right <laughs> um the the enabling them to build on top of you is, is is a separate discussion for the internal developers they touch upon that through rpa kind of talk yeah but still i think the ab app for um that language and then can you bring in the newer modern languages like Python and or, you know, even older languages like Java? Can you utilize that? And then how you can bring in the sort of heterogeneous sort of technologies to build on top of um, um, yeah. SAP? Because everybody else is going there. You know, Microsoft serves now Linux VMs in their cloud. Yeah. I mean, it's like it's nothing religious about, you know, language or a platform or operating system. Uh, people are open to it. I think um, I, I I want SAP uh, to to sort of talk a little more about um, interoperability and openness. I think that will go a long way. Yeah, yeah. Rise with SAP. Um, let's dig a little bit deeper into that. Uh, they they stated that uh, it as um, a transformation as a service. How, how do you yeah. see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so rice for SAP is a is a concept, right? It's a process for automating the business process, right? So rice with SAP, not rice for it. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. So maybe with, maybe with that's SAP. what they mean by that, right? And and, and and I think it's a it's a it's a good good concept, and they, they say they have seen tremendous progress. I think uh, Christian Klein did. Uh, uh, talk about some figures. I don't remember exactly what figures they talked about as to how much growth it has seen, but it is good. I think the issue there is when you look about transformation, there are three things. One is the technology transformation, which includes both applications and the underlying infrastructure. And SAP has control over the application, but not on the infrastructure as yet. Yeah. Uh, then you talk about the business process transformation, which is where Rise with SAP starts to help. The third is the attitudinal transformation, 
within the organization. And that's a typical stumbling block within most enterprise customers, not so within the mid-market segment, because they are the ones who are at the cusp of faster transformation than the enterprise customers. So I think there is a challenge there when they talk about the business process automation. It's not just taking technology like this uh, Signavio and saying, okay, how do I automate the process for you? but how do I change the internal mindset of the stakeholders from sea level down to say, you know what, we are going to help you transform your business. I think that's a key. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, I, I hope they inside that program, you know, right with SAP, yeah. when they call it business transformation as a service, they yeah. have these, these sort of business consultative services like people go to Bain and company and others like, you know, the yeah. kind of vendors, right? So, or, or they work in conjunction with those. I think they they opened up that um, rise with SAP. They started with HANA only, and then they opened up yeah. to the two other areas. Overall, my 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 feel for the this, this year's uh, Sapphire was, a lot positive than last year. I think last year was kind of convoluted and the, the format of the whole event was also because of the clutches and the, and the, yeah, the way yeah. they presented it. Like it was yeah. really obvious. Yeah. They kind of stumbled. Yeah. And yeah. there was movement, you know, people were moving and talking and, and there was dialogue there. You know, like I think the body movement actually helps when people can feel like there's energy in the room and stuff like that. It was not boring-ish, if you will. Um, yeah, I took, took some notes on the, um, yeah. they, they call it, they have an industry network, Ariba network and asset intelligence network. They, they want to merge these three and, um, and then create that, you know, network of networks. I think that's a, that's a, um, as we, we talked about earlier, it's a huge undertaking. It's a very audacious goal. Yeah. I hope they can, they can um, take some step in, steps into that direction because the, the thing is this, like, it's not only that it's technically challenging or process wise the, the fact is that there are multiple vendors out there like like not whole world is using sap and how do you how will you interact with suppliers who use oracle and or some other vendors you know um, for for their systems i think interoperability is is key and for that standards are key like i remember when we were doing global trading web and then we were setting up these standards for, for example, just to give you one example, the invoice. Um, you need an invoice XCBL. We, we invented XCBL yeah. back then, and then it became Rosetta Net, and it was a deviation from, uh, or, or, or going from EDI to XML. You know that, and during that sort of transition, we we started inventing these these um, uh, standards, right? And we had to collaborate with so many countries. Um, and their think tanks and their key technology players. We have to work with Visa because they set up scale. They just uh, launched this uh, SCT standard, scale electronic transfer standard, stuff like that. So it was it was a very just to work on the one document, just invoice. And there's part of the invoice is perform invoice in the global tra trading, like when you send stuff from one country to another. It, an invoice goes to the customs. It's called Performa invoice, for example. Yep. Um, people who can understand uh, SCM, uh, supply chain manager, they, they understand that. So long story short, I think you have to have standards for interoperability uh, to work across vendors. I think uh, that will that will take a while. That that's uh, that was one. And another thing is open APIs. You know that that I a few keywords which I wanted to hear in there. Maybe I'm a technologist, I'm biased. Like <clears throat> I wanted to hear API first or developers kind of keywords and open standards, which were kind of missing from that keynote, I think. Yes, you, you, you are right. And I think those uh, those keywords were uh, missing from that uh, f from that concept of, of uh, you know, that network of networks, networks yeah, yeah. right? And I think uh, it's an, it's important to kind of bring that there, but there is there is a lot of development work that needs to be done still at SAP because 
as far as when one of the briefings I was in about six months ago, they were explaining that they did not even have at that time a good way to scan an invoice, a shipping document, and uh, OCR it into the data warehouse. <laughs> yeah. I think that was a big challenge there, right? So I think, um, but I'm sure those kind of problems can be easily solved. But you're right with this open API and how to have this interconnected, you know, businesses. I think they will get there. It's not a one to two year, you know, uh, value proposition. I think it's a five to 10 year goal, which they have uh, started on. If they can, uh, you know, get the customers to buy into the concept and they see the value, I mean, they give some very good examples of the automotive industry, right? But then those were must have been very custom built. Uh, so one has to see what is the end to end, how soon it can be deployed, what kind of you know, you know, incremental value or the economic viability of the end end customers is in participating in this business network or the network of networks that they call it. This economic viability is going to be extremely important. Yeah, I I I I'm totally with you uh, on that. I I think the I will add a couple of things there. I think they they need to um, involve the SIs, system integrators, into this this uh, network of networks um, sort of uh, build up, if you will. It's not only a technology play; it's also a business play. It's also interoperability play. It's um, know how business transformation play, as you said earlier. Yeah. So I think they need a lot more uh, partners engaging in this. Um, endeavor if you will the yeah. sap alone yeah. uh, with maybe one or two partners that cannot pull it off i believe they need they need the industry-wide participation in it right uh, the the only other thing i would have liked to hear is how they are opening up new buying centers right because sap and sap partners typically sell to it yeah you know but the business buyer is the new buyer, right? Where they see time to value, yeah. where they're looking for business agility, right? Yeah. So I would have liked to see them, okay, if they are providing business agility, if they are focused on delivering time to value and also working towards delivering you know, new types of business outcomes for the end customer, then how do they plan to open up and have this conversation with the business management instead of the IT management? I think yeah. that's a key area. Yeah, I think the composable ERP, that, that narrative is geared towards that, like just going to, you know, a line of business, you know, um, um, Fair enough. Of, uh, SPPs of uh, LOBs, if you will. I think... Um, it's still a challenge to be honest with you because yeah. the, the the key challenge is the uh, it's legacy right if yeah. you have sap in house and most probably you have you you have the the old erp system right you yeah know, it can be 10 years old 15 um yeah, unless i mean there are far and few um sort of customers who are just doing the new installation of their erp system if you will and mostly it's going to cloud right now it's not on yeah. prem so yeah. I think the legacy actually um, uh, is a good thing to to cross sell and sell more to the customers, but at the same time, it's, it drags you down in many yeah. ways, right? Yeah. So it, it doesn't make you move uh, fast. And I think agility is the key from the buyer's point of view, from the from enterprises who are trying to buy this these technologies. They're looking for like quickness, agility. Uh, how can we do um, things faster? And, yeah. and we, we talked about two types of systems and the third type of system, which I usually, usually uh, talk about is the systems of innovation, yep. newer stuff like, you know, the AI, ML, uh, you, know, you know, brain machine interface, even going further. Uh, and then for self-driving cars, you know, all this uh, NLP and computer vision and whatnot. Yes. I think those kind of capabilities um, um, 
other players are cooking up much faster, which are mainly hyperscalers. And there are some other others too, uh, second or third tier uh, sort of uh, companies. I think SAP needs to, um, I think, collaborate a lot more. I think yeah. we have we have beaten that topic, <laughs> yeah, the collaboration yeah, yeah, part, like yeah. a lot. Good, good. <laughs> um, yeah. And with that, um, yeah, I'll just um, give your departing remarks, and I appreciate you joining me today on a short notice. Um, uh, and I really, really appreciate it. It's a privilege. I, I know you traverse in the, um, you have done a lot of work as analyst uh, um, in, your, in your past, and and these days you work in the mid market, if you will, and and uh, no, I, I appreciate your kind words. Uh, no, no, it's always it's always uh, great to be with you, and I think you know, I think SAP is back. I think we should be bullish on SAP. Mm -hmm. I think they are getting the message out. They are bringing up some products from the woodworks out, which is which is a good thing. Yeah. And uh, the, the journey for SAP, journey is a very overused terminology in the tech world, but I think the journey for SAP has just started. So I don't think we should kind of write them off uh, in the sense that they've kind of lost the battle, but it has just started. They are just trying to experiment a little bit in my view. And I think uh, you know ex this experimentation will serve some greater purpose and there will the pieces will start to fall in place by the end of the year for SAP. I think next year Sapphire might be even better. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with you. I think they they have most of the pieces of the puzzle, yeah. right? And they have to just rearrange it and, and, and create uh, um, like rally you know, partners and practitioners behind it. I actually yeah. think that's the key. And I think they, they have a good uh, communicator on their side right now with, uh, with, with Julia being there now coming yeah. from uh, Microsoft, right? Um, yeah. And um, yeah, I, I wish them all the best and uh, we'll, we'll uh, be watching them. With Same that, here. Thanks, yeah. Narag. Appreciate all it. All right. Okay. Thank Bye, Sarjit.